Are you trying to figure out how to update your space, but you have a super tight budget? Well, in today's video, I'm going to walk you through how we recently refreshed our living room along with did a couple of super budget friendly DIYs to completely transform the space. So stay tuned. Hey, if we're just now meeting, I am Lindsay with Organized to Save, and I'm here to help you be a more productive and get organized on a budget. And I also love a good DIY and room makeover, and that's exactly what we're gonna be tackling in today's video. Today, I wanna share with you a couple ways that you can DIY a space on a budget. Now, this past year, with pretty much being home the majority of the time, I noticed that we actually don't spend too much time over here in this living room, and I realized it was because a couple different key factors. And the biggest one being the layout of the room. There's a couple things that were functioning really well for our family. For example, the shoe caddy behind me has been amazing. I have a whole video on that if you want to check that out. How we had the furniture laid out, it just wasn't a warm and cozy environment. So that's my first tip and that is a super easy and free tip. And that's simply just to rearrange the space. Try out your furniture in different configurations. I ended up moving this small couch from the corner next to the shoe caddy over next to our larger couch to create almost like a sectional feel. That was a huge game changer for this room. We don't feel like we're sitting super far away from each other by sitting across from each other in the room. Yeah, I still have extra seating areas that I've created so that way if we do have people coming over, we can easily pull these chairs over next to the couch. Now, while we were at it and rearranging the space, we went ahead and actually layered some rugs which adding layers and textures into your space, another great way to update it on a budget. Now I will not say you need to run out and go buy yourself some rugs, but we actually had this jute rug on hand because previously it was up in our bedroom, but we recently got new carpet in our all of our upstairs, so we didn't really need that rug up there anymore. So I went ahead and put it underneath our existing rug in our living room, and I really love the layered texture. Now I shared this tip in a recent Amazon favorites video that I'll have linked down below. But if you have a stubborn rug that tends to curl up in the corners, you're gonna need to snag some of these. These are just little sticky rug corners that help to keep your rug down. We've been using these for weeks now and absolutely love them. It really helps to keep those pesky quarters down so that way you can transition over the rug smoothly. To go ahead and tie the whole couch area together, we previously had a coffee table. The size of it did not work for the space any longer and it was one that I had picked up at a thrift store for I believe $12. So after using it for several years, I was okay with investing in some new coffee tables. And I'm really glad that I found these ones off Amazon. It's a two table set, they nest underneath each other, and it's been actually working really well for us because that way, if we wanna have some snacks over here or something or do a movie night, which I'm hoping we can do this weekend, then we can just easily pull these tables out and we can each have a spot for our cups. Now this room, when we moved in almost six years ago, which is just crazy to think about, was probably our first room that we actually did a complete makeover on. So it was time for a little bit of a refresh and to help tie it into the theme of the rest of the house. One way that I did this was by updating what was behind our couch area. Previously, I had a huge gallery wall full of pictures and different color picture frames, but it was time for a little bit of a refresh and I wanted to simplify it. I took all that down, patched and painted the walls, and found these inexpensive wood picture ledges off Amazon. And again, I will have everything linked down below, so in case if you are curious, you can go check it out for yourself. Having the picture ledge, it adds dimension because I'm layering in different size pictures, but it really helps to give us a little bit of white space on that wall. Now one tip for you when you are putting together a gallery wall is to, like I said, think about different sizes, but also think about your height difference as well. So for example, I hung a couple different things up on the wall versus just having everything laying on the picture ledge. Now on this other side of the room in this corner, I wanted to make this a cozy little seating area. And also it had to function as a spot for us to sit down and put our shoes on. So this is where we enter and exit our home. But to add a little bit to this space, I found these hanging planter baskets off Amazon doing some faux greenery because this girl does not have very much of a green thumb. Went ahead and put up some wood artwork that I already had on hand. So as a spot where we can put our shoes on or take them off when we come home. Now next to it, this is a tip that if you've watched any of my previous room makeover videos, you probably already know. You hang curtains in a room, but hang them 
high, almost all the way to the ceiling, it will make your room feel so much taller. And that's exactly what I did in this space, utilizing some really budget-friendly finds. This black curtain rod that I found on Amazon was only, I think, $16.99. I'll put it here on the screen. And I also found these white panels, I believe for $6.99 or something close to that each. So this entire setup was super budget friendly. Now, one of the big DIYs that we did in this space was over in the fireplace. This is a project that I've been wanting to do for years. And honestly, I am in love with how it turned out. And that was to get rid of the gold and add in some black. Now this entire process we did in a day, but I would suggest that you find a partner to help you out because you're gonna need multiple hands. Once I had everything cleaned and ready to go, I went ahead and used this really cool product that had tape already on it. I used it to tape off the windows of the fireplace as well as the surround of the fireplace. Now for the window section, I just cut a short section put it on there, pulled the plastic part down, and then it taped around the existing edges. This worked perfectly. You'll see after I take this off, there's no residue on the glass whatsoever. I had that part all done. I went ahead and just went around the entire fireplace, making sure that there was no gaps whatsoever. That way we wouldn't get any paint on the brick where we do not want it. I did have to put some extra tape in a couple spots just because with sticking to brick, obviously tape does not stick very well. So just make sure that you have that really secure on the fireplace. Now this was kind of a trial and error process for us as we were trying to figure out how to actually paint this fireplace without getting any overspray in the rest of the room. And the product we ended up using was actually a high heat spray paint, which so we first started out with just using a piece of cardboard to form a barrier, but we were getting a lot of overspray still. So in the end, we ended up putting more of that plastic all the way around it, basically just lifting up the plastic, spraying down below. And then once we got to the lower section, you'll see that my husband actually created almost like a secret cutout in the cardboard itself. So that way we could really get in there and get down in that lower section. Because we noticed as we were spray painting, we were missing the underneath areas and we needed to get down lower. Learn from our mistakes and just start off by completely covering the entire thing so that way you don't have any overspray that leaks out into the rest of your room. Now this particular spray paint that we used dried really quickly so we were able to do several different light coats which I would highly suggest just doing light coats and just letting it dry coming back. It will take you some time but as you can see in the end it turned out so nice. I'm absolutely thrilled with how it turned out. It looks like we went out and bought a new fireplace insert and this only cost us a kind of spray paint and for the plastic tarping. Now the other super fun DIY that we did has to do with above the fireplace. My husband went ahead and installed our TV of the fireplace, but I've never been a super huge fan of TVs above fireplaces. So we went ahead and compromised and I decided to build out a frame. That way it ties into the fireplace a little bit better. It almost feels more like a piece of artwork than a TV. And I'm sure you've all seen the super expensive TV that you can buy that has the frame already on there, but that was definitely not in our budget. So what I did to make this TV frame, was grab some foam board, contact paper, and hot glue. Put this together, I went ahead and measured out how big my TV is, and then cut out these strips to create the sides of the frame. This is gonna take some time and some measuring because it's gonna be specific to your TV. Once I had all four sides measured out, I went ahead and started creating the angle where the sides would actually fit together. So that way it looks like an actual framed piece of artwork. Once I had everything cut and measured out, this is when I started wrapping it with the contact paper. I just picked up this one at Target, liked the neutral wood look of it. Once everything was wrapped ready to go, it was time to put it together and put it up on the TV. I just simply used hot glue to adhere this all together and used some of the leftover foam to almost create like a mount on the inside so that way it could sit on the top of the TV. I really wanted to keep this light so that's why I opted to go with the foam board. I'm in love with how this turned out and it was super budget friendly. All right, so if you're liking this video so far and loving these budget friendly DIYs, leave this video a big like and comment down below with what your favorite DIY is. And do not forget to subscribe so you do not miss any future videos.
As you notice, greenery in this room was really one thing that I wanted to incorporate. So I had a little faux plant, but I did not like the black base that it came in. Now I had these wooden dolls left over from my son's nursery from a DOI that I did in his room. I'll have that link down below if you missed it. But I actually picked these up at the Dollar Tree. These were the scraps that I had cut off, so it made for the perfect size that I needed for this project. All that I did was alternating high and low, all the way around the planter, I hot glued these sticks to it. I absolutely love how this turned out and it was a completely free project for me because I already had them on hand. I'm absolutely thrilled with how this entire room was pulled together. I will tell you to shop your house first before you go out and buy anything. A lot of the pillows that you see in this room or different blankets were ones that I had already on hand just in different rooms. Played around with the different textures and colors. Love how it came together. So I hope you realize that you do not have to spend a ton of money to make a huge change in a room. Doing a couple little DIYs and rearranging of some furniture, we were able to completely transform this space to a space that we now love and are super excited to be able to enjoy. Now if you missed that IKEA shoe caddy hack that I was talking about earlier, I will leave that linked here for you to go check out and we'll see you in the next video.